So, how do you copy and paste animation? Hmm. How do you do it the Python way? So I've got a cube here, it's animated. You can see it's got this jumping, um, you know, kind of like this jumping character kind of thing. It's got squash and stretch. I've animated it uh, so that it's got all the good stuff. The timing's all there. And, you know, we often do this in animation where we animate a cube just to start off just so we can get all the timing and all that good stuff correct. And then we can, you know, either reanimate this to match or you know, if we could do something a little bit cooler, like copy and paste, that'll save us a bit of time. So that's what I'm going to show you guys today. So of course you can come here and do it the manual way in the animation editor, in the graph editor. And, you know, like go to a particular channel and come here and do copy. I mean, this is the manual way. Nobody wants to do that. Come on. I mean, you know, you can do that, but you know, sometimes it's not very reliable. You can paste and you can paste in the wrong channels you can you know mess up the timing based on where your time slider is and your settings can be a little bit different it's you know it's not very reliable which is why i'm going to show you guys how to do it the python way much more reliable much quicker and much cooler and in this whole process i'm going to show you guys what a function is so uh, let's start let's do import maya.cmds as cmds should be pretty familiar by now. Um, this just gives us access to all the Maya commands. And I'm gonna show you guys the two functions which allow us to cut and copy keys. So, paste key. Well, it's three functions really. There's one more which is copy key. So these three functions allow us to cut, copy, and paste uh, all the keys from one object to another. And I'll go through each one and what each one does. I mean, it's pretty explanatory already, self-explanatory. So uh, maybe I shouldn't waste too much time on it. <laughs> but really, if you run this, if I if I s just run this code on its own with this cube selected, you can see it's cut. And if I run this, you can see nothing happens. But what it's done is it's copied all the keys in the memory. And now if I select this control rather than the cube, and run this last line, it'll paste. So it's just copied whatever into memory and it's pasted it onto this rig control. And you can see that's, I mean, that's already pretty handy. You can already use these this code right away. You, know, you don't even need to do anything else, but we can do better, you know, we can do better. So I've kind of created a little button so I can select this cube and I've just like, you know, Control Z back, so I've got no keys on my rig control. And I can select the cube, I can select this control, and I hit this little button which I've created earlier, and it does exactly that. It just cuts the keys from this cube and it's pasted it onto the rig control. You know, pretty standard stuff, and that's what we're gonna do. So let's start off by writing, let's write the cut function first. So cut key, what do I want to cut? You know, if I don't add anything in there, it's just going to use my selection. But what I want to do is I want to store my selection. LS SL is equal to true. So this should be pretty familiar. This CMDS dot LS SL is equal to true. Just stores your selection in this selection variable. And then I can recall the variable. I can say I want my first selected object, which is zero one index zero one. And now, um, you know, let's just, let's transfer the animation back onto my, my cube first. So we we start nice and fresh. Okay. Forgot to reset everything. There we go. Now everything's reset. So there's no animation on the rig, but there is animation on my cube. All right, let's continue. So I want to add an additional flag here. I want to say animation is equal to objects. Don't worry about what this what this flag is, this keyword argument. Don't worry too much about what it means. I'm gonna show you guys later on how to look up all these different flags and you know, like how to look up the documentation on them. And the documentation has, you know, very thorough explanation on what each flag does and when you wanna use it, you know, in particular. 
But for now, let's just use it like this. Let's just do that. And then I want to say option is equal to keys. And then I want to do cms.paste key. So I want to paste the key on my second selection. So using 01, index 01. And I want to say animation objects again. And I want to say op option is equal to replace completely. Completely. So what this is going to do is it's going to cut the key from my first selection and my second selection, it's going to paste and it's going to replace all the animation that was there originally. So it's going to replace it completely. Hence the replace completely flag there. So I can run this code now and you see it's done exactly that. It's cut the keys from the cube and it's pasted it onto this little guy. And of course I can select this guy and select the cube again and run this and it'll do the opposite. It'll cut the keys from this control and paste it onto the cube. And I'm going to zero this rig back again. So we start fresh, reset everything again. And already this is pretty useful. You can drag this onto the shelf and you've got a little button which you can hit now, which does cut and paste. But we can go one step further. You know, we can wrap this in a function so that we can reuse this code later on. We don't have to retype this code again. And in the next lesson, that's basically what we're going to do is we're going to reuse the function that we write in this lesson to create a, an offset control. So if I just hide this cube temporarily, you know, this rig here has an offset control. So it's going to offset control around this, this main cog control. And I can use this offset control basically to offset the animation. And that's great and all, but not all rigs have this offset control, which is why in the next lesson, I'm going to show you guys how to create one using a, like a local, like a local locator setup inside your scene, which, you know, basically reproduces the same setup as this offset control. Cause not all rigs have it. You know, sometimes you just need it. You need that extra control. So let's start by wrapping this function. So I'm going to remove that. I'm going to define, say def. And that's when you know you're starting a function. So I'm going to define a new function. I'm going to call this transfer animation like this. And I want to say here, I want to transfer from object A, OBJ A, to OBJ B. So OBJ A is going to be my source object. And OBJ B is going to be my destination object. So what I'm going to paste to. And these are basically parameters. I'm specifying the parameters for this function because functions, they can take inputs and they can give an, they can give a certain output. So when you run a function, it'll take whatever inputs you define in the function, it'll execute whatever codes underneath it, and it'll give a return value. And sometimes you don't have to give it a return value. In this instance, we're not returning any value. So you know, it doesn't really matter. We don't have to worry about that. But I want to now change this selection. So it's not just selection now. I'm just using this parameter. This this is a variable. You know, whatever we pass to, it's going to store uh, whatever value, whatever input we give this function in this OBJ A variable and in this OBJ B variable as well. So I'm going to replace that with OBJ B. So let's come down here and let's execute this function. So if I don't execute the function and let's bring my cube back, if I don't execute this function and I, I do all my selections like a good boy, run the code, nothing actually happens because I didn't actually call this code. What it's actually done is when I run this code, it just stores this function in memory, but it won't actually execute any of this code until I call the function. So I can call that at any point in time and it kind of modularizes your code a little bit. It means you don't have to think about your code from top down. You know, you don't have to think about how it executes from top down. You know, you can start to break up your code a little bit so you can execute certain functions when you want it, like little snippets. And you start creating a nice little library of code. People are going to be like, why are you so good at coding? You're so cool. And you'll be like, yeah, I am. All right. So let's execute this function. I'm going to use my selection. I'm going to, I'm going to store my selection again. CMDS.LS SL is equal to true. 
and I'm going to access my selection. I'm going to say my first selection is going to be my source object and my second selection is going to be my destination object. So now if I select the cube and select the control and I run this code, it's going to do the same thing as before. It's going to cut from the cube and it's going to paste on the control. Awesome. We've successfully wrapped our code in a function. And that's really it. That's that's all you need to do to execute, you know, to create a function and then execute it. And we're going to use this little transfer animation function in the next lesson. And you can see how it's going to get really powerful once you start thinking about your code in a modular way and stop thinking about it as just big blocks of, you know, big lines of code. You can start thinking of it as like little snippets that you can choose pick from here and there and put together and mix and match and make really cool code like that we can go one step further right now i'm just cutting key but what if i want a way to either cut or copy i mean rather than changing it manually here like this each time you know we can start to think about maybe we should make a function that can switch between either cutting keys or copying keys and then pasting it so I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to copy this line and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say cut key as my, as one, as one option and copy key as a, as another option. And I'm going to, I'm going to switch between either cut key or copy key. So to do that, first I want to define what I, what we call a keyword argument. So I'm going to say cut is equal to false. So what is this keyword argument? It's basically a way to give additional you know, additional parameters to this transfer animation function. And I'm going to say it's going to default to being false. And down here, I'm going to say if cut and else like this, and then the code. So what does this mean? Well, it's saying if cut is true, then it's going to cut key. And if else, it's going to copy key. So if cut is true, it's going to cut key. If it's not true, it's going to copy key. That's, that's what this else means. Else means if this isn't true, it's going to execute this code underneath. And if it is true, it's going to execute this instead. And then finally, it'll execute this paste key, regardless of, you know, whether it's cut or, or copy. And we, you know, we, we use this default value to say, well, if we don't say whether it's cut or not, it's just going to default to copy. But if we do want it to cut, then down here, when we call this function, we can actually say cut is equal to true. So now it's not going to be false. Now, if it's true, if cut is true, it's going to do this instead. So that's how you basically switch between cutting and copying using this if and else statement. And we can have this additional flag here as a way to control what happens inside of this function. You know, give, give us a bit more control. So now we don't have to swap the code there all the time. You know, we have to swap cut and copy each time. I can instead just change it from cut here to cut true or cut false. And if it's cut false, you don't really need to put cut false. You can just have it empty because cut is going to default to being false regardless. So if I run this code, cut false, let's just run it. You can see, did it do anything? No, we have to reverse our selection because I forgot to reset everything, but now it's going to copy the animation from the control to the cube. You can see like that. And now I just delete all the animation on the rig. And if I just wanted to cut instead of copy, I can select this guy, select that guy and say cut is equal to uh, true. So it's going to cut the keys. And there you go. Let's cut the keys now rather than just done a straight copy. And we're going to use this code later on in the next lesson, like I was saying, to create an offset control for this little rig. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, we didn't cover anything too crazy, you know, but we did get into something that's really powerful, which is um, how to wrap your code in functions so you can reuse it later on. And that's really the the basis of a lot of programming is just to try to reuse as much as possible that you've written in the past because you know that that just saves you from having to rewrite code over and over again and you'll find that you know the more experienced you are at coding 
the more you find that you can reuse little snippets that you've written in the past and really save yourself a lot of time. And that's how you can start to do really complicated things without having to write much code at all because you've written so much in the past already. You can just reuse chunks of code that you've written here and there and put it together and do really powerful, really amazing things. And yeah, you can start to see the power of Python. So stick around. Mm-hmm.